thank you for joining us here. I, I am coming to you from Bedeck, uh, Cape Breton, Nova Scotia, um, which of course for many of us that are on the call, um, we are coming from Mi'kma'ki, the unceded territory and ancestral homeland of the Mi'kmaq Nation. So that's an important acknowledgement to make right off the top. My name is Margie Eaton, and uh, I've had the great privilege of being part of the Erheli uh, Gaelic Narrative Project. So we are just now in um, session four. And so tonight is the night that I'm host, uh, your, your Ben and Ty. And uh, this is a series of six virtual visits um, that we have scheduled for Fridays. And so if you're new, uh, you're very much welcome, and uh, I'll explain a bit of what it is. And if you're back for more, thank you for joining us once again um, and saying yes to, to signing on for this project. Um, so um, we might have some new folks here with us. So I think it's good to, to reiterate what this project is. Um, during our time together, we will tell stories and listen to stories about Gaelic Nova Scotia and beyond as we discover the moments that we would like more of in our, in our lives. Um, this project has allowed us to virtually gather and explore questions on important topics, focusing on the moments and stories that we would like more of. And while shedding lights uh, on persistent narratives that might no longer serve us. So we're using an approach called reauthoring, developed by Chain Swart. And at the core of reauthoring is the belief that everyone should have the storytelling rights to their lives. Um, it is about putting the pen back in our hands and then collectively uncovering, highlighting and thickening counter narratives that better reflect our values. Um, so that's what the premise is. And um, so, to give you a little sense of the agenda for tonight, um, we gather here. Please feel free as I'm as I'm speaking um, to uh, to let us know where where you're coming in from. Uh, if you're new, if you're back for more, any any thoughts? We have this great chat feature, which uh, you are highly encouraged to use because uh, we will be chatting. We'll be using our mics in a short while here, but um, we do love the chat. And so uh, feel free to let us know where you're coming in from. Um, we, we love to hear that. The plan is to, uh, we will be uh, breaking out in rooms, which will less or uh, have little smaller discussions uh, as groups on certain questions that I'm gonna pose to you. And, um, and then we're gonna come back here and meet with our uh, esteemed guests for the night and spend some time with them. We're gonna be listening to them and, and then of course telling our own stories we'll be gathering again in small breakout groups which you know I was thinking today is not unlike um square dancing you know we kind of dance with our corner partner and then we're switching to our partner and dancing another set over there meeting new people so it's it's very fitting to our tradition and um and then yes another breakout room and then that just about takes us up to 8 30 which is Atlantic time we're here at 7.05 now. Um, so the plan is just to go till 8.30 and then you're off on your way for your, e your, your evening and your weekend plans. And uh, so that's, that's kind of the lay of the land. I hope that makes sense. Um, so in case you haven't figured out, we're gonna be talking about dancing, specifically square dancing, because we really are in a time that is a, perhaps a bit of a first, at least in my lifetime, probably many of our lives lifetimes that we are without square dancing. We are without that sense of community uh, with this COVID year and we are so missing it. And it gives us a great time to pause and reflect and think on the values that we love with, with it, what comes with it um, and what we lack when we don't have it. Um, and it's just temporary. We will, we will definitely revive that very soon, I hope. Um, but it gives us a good time to take stock and not take it for granted. So tonight we will be um, sharing a bit of that, sharing our own recollections of perhaps dance halls and dance history in our own lives and hearing from, from three that uh, have, have a vast history um, in it. So um, the plan is just to enjoy uh, a bit of a, a sense of a virtual um, reminiscent uh, mood of the dance. So thank you for saying yes and coming along for 
for the fun. Um, so to give a perspective, perhaps if you are unfamiliar with it or if you are missing it like I am, uh, we've got a little spar uh, part of a documentary that I wanted to show. And Natasha, if you feel up for it and you've got it in the right spot, it's just a portion, but um, it sums it up really nicely. So we might kick things off with that video clip. you get the culture this is the heart and this is the culture and this is the tradition of Cape Breton and it was so worth traveling for two hours to get to this definitely and if this is all we say before we go back next week then the trip will have been worth it perfect Natasha thank you so much for that that was from a documentary filmed back in 2005. And just like Kimberly, you said there, how many people are no longer with us? It's amazing in just over 15 years, how many that we've lost and we mourn that still, um, such valuable members to the, to the tradition in that area. That was a lot featured at the Brook Village Dance Hall. But if you're interested in that documentary, it's very uh, viewable. And there was a link shared earlier in the week, but there's about, about 15 minutes of that doc that digs into some of these great traditions. So, um, so make time to, to look for that. So um, that takes us up to about time for our first uh, breakout room. So the plan here is that um, we'll be, I, I, as mentioned before, we'll be thrown into a random group of three. Uh, generally it's three. If you get two, go with the flow. If you get four, go with the flow. Um, we'll give ourselves about 15 minutes to chat. So if, if it's three, we'll go about five minutes a person. So we encourage you to, to speak and stay on the line and speak and share uh, a bit. And, and also, of course, listen um, and try and divide that time evenly uh, between, between the guests in the room. And uh, I've got some questions that Natasha is again going to help us by uh, putting in the chat and that should follow you over into the breakout rooms. But really simply, 
what about the topic brought you to the call tonight? There must have been something that perked your interest, even if you didn't have a knowledge of the dance or experience with it. There hopefully might have been something that that perked your interest. So um, you can say a bit about that. Um, do you like to dance yourself? And uh, tell us about a time you might have gone to a community dance. That's that's the gist of what we're we're digging into tonight. Um, make sure to introduce yourself, of course, and, and get to know uh, your neighbors as you would at the dance, but um, we'll focus on, on the topic at hand too. So we'll let the expert text take us away into our breakout rooms and we'll go for about 15 minutes and then we'll meet you back here at just about 7.30. I hope you're all game for that. The part of the set where uh, after you finish, you know, dancing with your partner, you kind of come back in the circle. Uh, this is it. We're making this as virtual as possible. And if you and uh, to Natasha or Susan who are looking, we're going to look for Margie's iPhone. That's Margie McGinnis, who's our other guest. Um, so welcome. There she is. Got a bit of a tilt on you, Mary. I we're, I wonder if we can. Straighten that out. That's okay. Turn your iPhone round. Hmm. Oh, yeah. What if you did that, Maggie? Come in, come in. Oh, That's perfect. it. Perfect. Well yeah. Well done, indeed. Shinu Hain. Well, we're welcoming everyone back into the fold here. Great chats right out the gate. It's super fun, and I hope that you're enjoying it already. Um, you're encouraged as mentioned to use the chat. If you see the chat icon there, um, feel free to uh, let us know any things that came up in that um, discussion. And also I, I would like to invite you to, if, if there's a question that you have, I've got a list of questions for our, our guests, but um, if there's a question that you're dying to ask of one of our guests, put it in the chat and if there's time and, and if I see it, I would I will totally ask because it's great to have that interaction and if you're enjoying it let them know too it's nice to see encouragement for our for our people in the chat um so I should introduce our guests um why don't I start with Dale I'm seeing Dale there Dale are you in in Troy tonight you're coming to us from Troy that's correct uh, downtown Troy. Yeah. downtown Troy uh, which Troy, if you're doing the geography, is just up from the causeway as you head on to the island. So Dale comes uh, to us from Troy, but he's originally from Scottsville. And uh, I think if there was an award for most hours spent on Route 19 or spent going to Cayley's, Dale would have it. He's, he's, uh, he, wherever there's a good time, there's Dale. I should reverse that. Wherever Dale is, is a good time because he goes to all the dances and all the concerts and he supports in so many ways. So he comes by it naturally being a, a fiddler himself. And so if he's not fiddling or if he's not up giving a step, which I, I saw him in that little clip we, show, we showed there before, he was at that dance. Um, but if he's not on the dance floor, he's in the audience and he's supporting it. And if he's not there, he's behind the scenes supporting the culture here in a big way. He puts a lot of volunteer hours in um, at the Celtic Music Interpretive Center. He's in a lot of community Gaelic classes working on his language skills and, uh, and he brings good cheer wherever he goes. So we're gonna hear from him in a little bit. That's Dale Gillis. 
We're also joined by Maggie McGuinness, uh, who's coming to us from West Mabu, and she's not too, there she is. Uh, she's not too far away from the dance hall, West Mabu Dance Hall, that's just up the road from her there. Um, but she comes originally from, uh, from Hillsdale, Zurich. Um, she's an immigrant to Mabu, <laughs> years now, years, years in, in the village and uh, a very community minded person. So for anyone um, not familiar with the dance scene in, in Mabu and in, uh, the local area, the West Mabu dances started in about 88, I think. And Margie and her husband, her late husband, Jimmy McGinnis, got them going in an effort to, for many different reasons, but one of which they made all ages the dance, which was a bit of a novelty. And that helped to allow kids to come to the dances and experience the culture. And uh, that changed a lot of lives. Um, and in those years, those decades of dances um, that are, are still going in times not COVID, but um, all the greats played that stage and a lot of musicians cut their teeth in playing there. And that helps to hone the music um, because our music is very much dance oriented. Um, so we owe a great deal of gratitude to that dance. And it was also a dance that went all year round on Saturday nights, which was not the usual. Um, a lot of dances are seasonal. So that was a big attribute too. And so we're gonna hear from her and the determination and, uh, and all that it took to keep that initiative going as well as maybe some good stories, I, I, I have a feeling. And then we've got Mary Janet McDonald, who I think we might know just as Mary Janet, um, who's coming to us from Port Hood, but she's a mob girl. That's right. And, uh, that's right. Don't let it fool you. <laughs> and um, Mary Janet has such a fascinating story. Um, and it, it's, it centers around uh, in, in her career of this, um, her step dancing. So I, we're talking a lot about square dancing, but step dancing is right there with it. And they go hand in hand. Um, started at a young age. Um, we might get some of her own history uh, from, from, from herself. Um, but that dancing that she learned at a young age would soon become part of her life. Her life story and dancing was something that had her at all the concerts and Kaylee's and dances around and has since taken her around the world and back as she has performed but also taught and uh, has put out two instructional videos over the years um, and has a, a great knack of teaching the steps but also uh, the square dance and figures and the and the old figures of Inverness County as well and it should be noted as I've I just discovered we've got some tunes and wooden spoons fans here she has had a whirlwind of success in this last year uh, with this um, inadverted success story of this baking show that uh, she hosts weekly on Sunday afternoons at 2 p.m. I highly recommend it, Tunes and Wooden Spoons, where she puts her camera on and welcomes you into her kitchen and uh, shares her love of baking. So um, we've got three gems here. We're gonna crack into some some questions. Maybe I'll start with you, Mary Janet. I'll, I'll, I'll give some time to each of you and then we'll get chatting all together. But if that's all right, I'll start with yourself, Mary Janet. If you'd like to um, tell us a bit about how you started, um, who was teaching you, what did that feel like? And what did you like about those, those first memories of your, of your dance life? Well, my first memories would be at a very young age, just step dancing uh, on a stage because um, as many people may know, Natalie McMaster's mom is Minnie and uh, she is my sister for every sense of the world, of the word. And uh, she would uh, hold my hand and she would say that uh, I could feel the, the rhythm through her, through her hand and I would be able to dance. Of course, you, you, they say you have to have the dancing in you, right? And uh, I had timing, which is hard to teach. And so I remember being up on the stage when I was four years old, uh, dancing on stage at the Mabu Hall and Minnie holding my hand and step dancing. So that was kind of my first introduction to, um, to dance itself and it was part of my life from there on in and I would dance in local concerts and as I grew older of course that uh, that 
changed into uh, there'd always be a square dance after the concerts usually. And pretty much in the summertime, I would find myself as a teenager being um, at a square dance or a concert every single solitary night of the week. Uh, there were, and it was 25 cents <laughs> to get in. <laughs> I remember that going, it was 25 cents and went up to 50 cents. And it was, it was just a, a, a wonderful memory. Um, and uh, as far you, you just, you learned from the other people that were, were dancing in, in the sets. And uh, um, I do remember we, when we went into the breakout room, uh, I was with Dawn. <laughs> your sister Dawn and Michelle Greenwell. Oh, <laughs> nice. And we were talking about how uh, my very first experience actually dancing in a square set. And that was um, when I, I was probably 12 or something like that. And uh, there was a concert in Wakagama and Buddy McMaster was picking me up to go to the concert. So I went with him, danced in the concert in Wakagama, and uh, we were just going to be going right home afterwards. And Raymond Ellis was the fiddle player. And for uh, he, there wasn't too many people had were staying for, for, the, for the square dance. So Raymond asked Buddy if, if he would, uh, would you stay? And, and so there'd be enough to make four couples for, for a square set. So Buddy said, you'll have to come and dance with me kind of thing because there wasn't that many there. And so I had my first square set <laughs> with Buddy McMaster, but, but you know, there's always characters in, in, uh, in Cape Breton. You know what I mean? We're, we're sometimes we're losing our characters, but that particular character that was my corner partner, he was an icon at <laughs> all of the square dances and his name was Jerome Campbell, but we called him ginger. Now, he, look, we, we loved him because he would he he never missed a set at any night that that I was ever at a, at a square dance, and but he had this comical way. The reason he was called Ginger was he had red hair, but <laughs> when you'd be doing the grand chain, every time you'd catch his hand, he'd go bah. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! It became his signature thing and but he was very much a part of it and he was always the first one up in in the uh, set at the at the head of the hall and uh I, I'll, I'll fast forward a little bit and up till um when I was in my my teens and later teens I remember the kind of when the decline started there was when I was probably 16 17 or something like that they introduced these adult dances. They called them pig and whistles. And you had to be 19 to go. And I can remember being at the Judic Hall and there was, it was an upstairs that you went to. And I can remember the lady at the door, like, go ahead, it's okay. You know, because I had no interest in alcohol, but I wanted to dance, you know? But uh, oh, those are my early square dance memories. And uh uh, very special memories. Oh, perfect, Mary Janet. And you know what? I think, I, I, I wonder if Ginger ever knew that his legacy would live on because still to this day, when we're dancing, people will say, bah. And it's just yes. to make you laugh. Like, don't take yes. it so seriously. And it's just to get a smile out of you. And it lives on. And I can't help but just be so envious of the fact that you danced with Buddy McMaster because <laughs> I can only think of how few of us ever got a chance to dance with Buddy because well, he, he, he rarely danced. He never had the chance to dance. He was always playing. So I, I never appreciated that until later in life when I'm, I'm, I'm very happy to, to have been with him. Good that. dance card right there. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> well, thanks, Mary Janet. We'll come back to you in, in, a, in a quick bit. Dale, you're there. Hello, Dale. I, I made it back. I had technical difficulties there. My computer actually crashed in midstream. So I, oh. I'm on an iPad. I hope everybody can see me. We can. You, you're, you're a trooper. You just did the grand chain and we met again on the other side. Well, on the other okay. side, yeah. yeah. Well, Dale, my next questions are for you. 
Um, so I'm wondering now, now you've been going to all these, these dances for years, but do you remember your, your first square set or square dance that you went to and who your partner might've been? Uh, I do actually. Um, I, I had gone to different square dances, probably in Glencoe before this, but never actually went into a dance. But the first dance that I went to and, and danced at was at uh, West Model. And uh, it probably would have been 88 or 89, somewhere around there. And uh, I, I remember it was Kinnan and Betty Lou that were playing the fiddle that night and um, or doing the music. And um, there was a real good drive on. I, I remember that distinctly. And I, I also remember what brought me to the dance too was um, um, well, my, my dance partner. And, uh, of course it obviously never worked out in the long run, but, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, that, that's okay. basically why I ended up at, at, at the dance. And, and, you know, I had talked about it with, with my parents and whatnot beforehand. And because they were they used to go to the dances in Scottsville quite a bit, and those dances would have been uh, licensed. So I, uh, I never would have been allowed to uh, partake in them at, the, at that time. But um, it does bring to, to mind a, little, a quick little story, if I can tell a quick story. Of course, that's what um, we're here for. I remember uh, a dance going, I think it was Jerry Holland that played, and my parents were out to it and anyway the next day there's there was an old an older gentleman that lived on lived on our road and he had attended the the dance the night before as well and it was the afternoon it was a warm afternoon i was out mowing the lawn pushing the lawnmower and he drove along and stopped for a little chat and um so he said to me uh, you weren't at the dance last night. And I said, no, geez, I'm, I'm, I'm too young. I can't go to the dances just yet, but I'd, I'd like to go someday. And um, he, he went on to, to, to say it was a good dance and whatnot. So I, I, I asked him if he enjoyed himself and did he get on the floor and all that? And he said, yes, it was, it was quite, quite good. And, and um, I said, was there probably uh, some drinking going on and whatnot. And he paused for about what seemed like 30 seconds <laughs> and probably, definitely not that long. <laughs> and he said, well, put it like this. On the way home last night, I saw three bridges. I guess I took the right one. And he rolled up his window and left. <laughs> <laughs> and you never forgot it, see? Never forgot that. No. Well, Dale, it's it's so interesting because you would have been young going to that first dance and 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 had you know some fun and you remember that. But what what is it that keeps you going to them? You know, or what is it that that gets you off off the couch and into the car and running and and uh, going all of those those many times. I think the the people are a big part of it. Um, uh, the dances themselves, the music itself, to me, is, is a happy music. Um, I've been at many bars, many many dives, many different places in my life, and when I compare, say, the bar scene to a square dance. A square dance is it's happy music. It's it's got a drive to it. And mm -hmm. I don't always see that happiness in people in a place where there's loud. And I'm not condemning the music, but the the happiness is not there to me. It's even hard to have a conversation with people. Yeah. You're yeah. so right. You're so right. And it's worth it. And you feel better leaving, I'm sure. You know, you yeah. leave on that that good feeling place. Yeah, and, and that, that is largely what brings me back to the, and, and the Gaelic in it too. 
even though you may not be speaking it, there, there's there's Gaelic in music. That's right. You're yeah. so right on. Me too. I agree with you, Dale. And other people are agreeing with you too. Thanks, Dale. We'll come back to you too. So Margie, we're going to bring you into the fold. Um, you might be on mute there if, you, if you're able to turn your mute off. And I can ask you the first question. If there's a, there you are, you're all set. So as mentioned before, Margie, um, of course, has this long history of, of so much volunteering, it should be known. And one of the ways she's contributed to the communities um, that surround her is through the dance tradition. And so the big thing that I, I always come back to is that and we, I was talking about it in our, um, in our first breakout room where there's been, you know, ebb and flow to the dances over the years, but you and Jimmy stuck it out and you made, you were determined to keep things going when it, the, the tide was high and the tide was low with, with, with crowds and everything else. What was it that made you keep going with it? What did you see it doing for, for people? Um, just like Dale said, the happiness and the, smiles on people's faces and always a good time and always a laugh and uh, yes nice, young and old intermingling and dancing together like see an 80 year old dancing with a 16 year old is nice and that's no so liquor, true no liquor sold but there was some served <laughs> 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 which is part of the the lure i suppose you know um, but that's so true. It's not often probably noted how special that is, is that it's so at West Mabu in particular, in Glencoe and places that are and all over. over. No, no hangers on. It was just great. Except yeah. the ones who were for tea. <laughs> well, that's it. A lot of people probably don't realize just how consuming that volunteer role is uh, that you took on. So um, tell us some of that, some of that, the back, behind the scenes of what it, what it was to, to run the, the, the dances? Well, it was really Jimmy's baby, I should say, give him all the credit because I was reluctant at times to continue them. I would, you know, get discouraged, but he would keep at it. He went, his mother used to go, so he loved to see her going every week she was enjoying it. And then Peter was yeah. small going and Peter would go up and he'd fall asleep at the dancing, which lay him on the stage. It would pick him up when the dance was over. <laughs> it's was cute. But no, just to he did it more or less for his mother really for the he was raising for the ball he started off to fund them so it's good yes and but i'm when sure I got my other award i wrote a poem the poem sort of tells a story if you want me to read it to you if you, anybody didn't hear it before i would love okay. that okay so this is how i summed up the dances because really it was jimmy that gets the credit with thanks and humble admiration of my late husband, I accept this prestigious nomination. In 1988, Jimmy McGinnis had a vision to organize a family square dance was his decision. His softball team needed financial backing to buy bats, balls, and gloves. He must get cracking. The early years witnessed very few on the floor. He encouraged everyone to bring 10 couples through the door. His passion and determination was soon rewarded with huge crowds and profitable deposits recorded. He showcased all musicians from beginners to pro, treating each one fairly as they rostered their bow. People of all ages dancing together, he observed, leading to our culture and traditions being preserved. His team progressed to win an Eastern Canadian title. Heed his counsel, never give up. This message is vital. <laughs> <laughs> Mergie, oh, you have a way. You have so many talents. <laughs> so when, the, the, uh, when we went to win that Eastern Canadian title, we went over to PEI, and that the dances were always kind of ebbing low. You know, they weren't good. So that night, the weekend, we were over to PEI. We got Fabian McLean to work at the door for us, and we took his big Crown Royal car to Crown Victoria car to PEI. Anyway, so he called the next day to tell us he said oh my god he said jimmy you created a monster it was the biggest crowd ever at the dance that weekend so it took off from there so Is that, that, was, right? that was september 11th 1993 and i keep a book record of all the uh, dances of everybody yes. who played and since day one so that was it's nice to have so if you want to know who played on such and such date just ask me 
<laughs> I I I want to make sure everyone knows that that little yeah. Maggie has has journaled um in general throughout your life but you would you have it on record for every dance since the beginning and and the yeah. fun and and the sets you danced yes that's in my journal but this is just tells who played and how much we paid them and what the profit was it's, it's interesting isn't it yeah. um do you do you what did it do for you like what did you know you, you took on this task and and with jimmy what did it start to pay off in different ways for yourself other than you know no, the good I just of the... Met so many nice people over the years and yeah. got to know them great and um even just the fun of dancing and good exercise and yeah. you know i would some evenings i wouldn't feel like going but once i would go i would always have fun you guarantee that no matter what it'd be some silly thing like one night we, we went up and Peter said, he said, oh, mom, call me when you get there if there's anybody my age. And I got up there and there was all these older people. And I called Peter. I said, there's nobody my age here. <laughs> That's the thing. There's all ages. Just not. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's great. But there was always young and old. That was just a bad night. There's probably a storm or something. But there really is always such a, an arrangement of ages. Which yeah. is, is a beautiful thing. Um, does anyone have any dandy stories that come to mind? All three of you, can, you can unmute just so we can jibber jabber about any, any special moments that might have happened either on the dance floor or sometimes just watching and observing the dance, the dancers or outside the hall. You know, oh, I, I will, I will tell you a story. Just a quick story. Well, number one, in the breakout room, I talked about uh, the atmosphere in the hall. All the ladies were on one side and all the men were on the other side. And uh, all of the ladies wore dresses or skirts. There was no pants that I remember. This is from my teenage years. That's number one. The men always had liquor out in the cars. There was no bar and that they went out Whoever, whoever asked you for a square set and then came back and asked you for the last set, they were asking you home, meaning they were going to ask you home and maybe a future date, who knows. But anyway, <laughs> um, and there'd be a fight. There'd always be a fight. Uh, you know, there'd be fighting outside and everybody would rush out and then they'd come back in and all of that. <laughs> but uh, in Marvel, we, we had our own little group and we loved our own little set up at the front of the hall, right? And if we saw anybody else coming near it, we'd hold our hands tight so nobody could get in. Isn't that <laughs> awful? I know when we did that, it's awful to think of that. Anyway, my husband, who, who doesn't really dance, he said the only way he got into that set at the front of the hall is that he married into it. <laughs> <laughs> That's my story. <laughs> <laughs> Worth it. Worth it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we're married 50 years this year. So I guess, <laughs> I guess so. That's so good, Mary Janet. Oh my gosh. Dale, do you have any dandy memories over the years? Oh, lots, I suppose. Yeah. Um, maybe I'll tell just a quick little story. Margie, please don't shoot me for this. But this this is about Margie's husband Jimmy when when I when I was starting to get to know him and um, anyway about midnight by by midnight Jimmy would have you know a few shots in him <laughs> and I remember him saying to me one night this is after he learned who who I was and he he learned that uh, who my mother was and who my parents were and whatnot and he said you know what your mother your mother taught me in school. Great eight. Oh my God, I had an awful crush on for her. An awful crush. And grade eight. And and anyway, his liquor was running out. <laughs> and I'd be sober. So he said, Dale, we're gonna get Maggie to watch the door. You and I go outside and we'll hop in the car and we'll go back. We'll go back to the house and I'll I'll refill this thing. But don't tell Margie. <laughs> don't tell Margie. Oh, no problem, Jimmy. Let's let's go. We'd hop in the car, go back to to his place. He'd, he'd fill up, and we'd 
we'd come back, we'd come in the door, and the first thing Margie would do was roll her eyes at me. <laughs> he wasn't getting one over on her. <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> You do a pretty good Jimmy impression too. That was that, yeah. that sounded a lot like him. Yeah. Dale, do you you know what one of my fond memories too is is not that far in the in the distant past. And, and correct me if I'm wrong, but um, the night that Buddy McMaster passed, this is back in what year was that now? But it was a Thursday, as far as I'm remembering and people kind of started chattering let's let's all go up to Glencoe that was that was Buddy's dance for decades and it was kind of like let's let's toast him in this way and gather at the hall and we did uh Howie and Mac were playing and there was a great turnout and a great vibe and do you remember Dale there was a pile of us that that hung around after the dance and we we were outside the hall after the dance, which was already so fun. And it was just this combination of great folks um, that were all like-minded and we started telling stories and stories and stories. And they were Buddy stories and Jamora stories and Jerry stories with such fondness. And we were out there until pretty late. And I remember I got a terrible cough because I, I just couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't leave to miss anything and I, I suffered for it, but I had ended up with bronchitis, but I do it again. <laughs> do you remember that night? I do remember that night. Yeah. That's great. It, 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 was was, fun. it was a very, very good night. It was. And, and the stories did seem to be endless. Like people were much like the music, people were feeding off one another, I think. That's like, like right. a, a musician will feed off the dancers. And the dancers feed off a musician and and the stories were people were feeding off one another on the stories that night it was wide open you said it that you're so right on spot on a favorite memory for sure what about yourself margie i bet you've got some classic memories mm -hmm. trying to think <laughs> for, for those that don't know too margie um, with all the work of the dances would oftentimes you would end up being the, the home for musicians to stay after they played the dance and it was so late and they would end up back at your place and there might have been a few we'll come up to the house and and you'd put you would be such a hostess um, hosting visitors this was after one the dances went until 1 a.m and then we'd show up at the house and then more stories would start and tea and sweets and the rest. And you were such the hostess forever. And uh, those are also fond memories too. Yes, we're good. it's fun times. Fun um, times. One night there was a lady came to the dance and she was from uh, Korea. And I remember Jimmy asked her to dance and they were dancing and he said, he said, where are you from? She said, Korea. And he said, my gosh, you have a long drive home tonight. <laughs> That's true, though. You would see people from down the road and from all over the world, eh? Yeah. There was one lady who used to come from Boston. She'd uh, just fly in for the day and go to the dance and then fly out the next day. Just, she said she had to get her fix. Isn't that incredible, eh? Gosh, it's amazing. Um, and, you know, another quick share that I'll, I'll add in, and I hope you don't mind me mentioning, too, is it's in Jimmy's memory. One of my favorite times... <laughs> which sounds so funny to say, but um, it was the day of the funeral for Jimmy. And there was, it was such a loss to the community and we still feel that loss um, for so many reasons. He was larger than life. Um, and then of course the gathering ended up happening back in the West Mabu Hall after the funeral. And it wasn't too long before that there was food served and there was such a Kaylee atmosphere and so many musicians that were there. And there was kind of this nod to each other, let's get the fiddles out. And so all the musicians started to gather and then the tunes just went full speed in as, as would, as you would play it at a, at a dance, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't in, in, in this mournful way, it was in this oh. celebratory way. And then the dancing started and people got up to dance and it was incredible to see people like Trevor, his nephew, and Peter, his son, getting up to dance and coming back on her on such a sorrowful day, but in such a beautiful celebration. It's one that I hold very dear. Yes, that's nice. 
<laughs> it was. Yeah. There's such a beauty in, in how we how we do things in the culture. Yeah. Well, I'll I'll ask you one quick one quick question to um to end. And um what is it, what are some of the elements that come together to, to any of any of you three? What what elements come together when the dance is just right? What has to work, if you will? What are the the, the magic pieces of the puzzle? Well, b believe it or not, I think uh, the lighting set, sets the mood. It can't be too, too bright, but not too dim either. Um, I, I think that's important. Uh, the floor. music. What Sorry. was that, Maggie? I said the floor is important too. That's true, yes. Floor. Yes, you, you've got to have a good floor. With a little give. <laughs> yes. I um, I was I, I noticed a question pop up there about um, <clears throat> I don't know who it was, but the, the the maybe the origin of the the dance. We didn't really talk about that, but as far as I know, our 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 square sets are kind of they they, they came from the quadrille quadrilles, right, from France, and, and um, you know the way that they came to us probably never included any step dancing, but we've we've incorporated our step dancing into the, the figures that we uh, we dance. Yeah, that was the question. What are the sets or something like that? I can't remember. It was some um, somebody said that. Right. Uh, so our, in, in Inverness County, we have the, the three figures and then up north, they have so many more. And in Sydney, they have another set. Do you know what I mean? The Shetty Camp set, the and we, we uh, I guess we don't really have names for it. I think somebody was asking what was the, the names of this of the sets. And um, we, uh, it, it's just, it's evolved where it used to be four couples and different figures that could be danced with four figures. And when I was a teenager, I would see a set off in the corner where they danced the old fashioned ones and had a different, uh, you know, design. And I love that. And I did learn that to be able to teach it, to keep it uh, archived, I guess. But, um, you know, it's evolved into what it is today, where there's more than four couples in a set and you don't so much have the figures as such, but there's something, something lost and something gained in the popularity that there is. I just wanted to mention, just want to say that. Yes, there's, there's, there's so much depth to it isn't there and mm -hmm. and lots lots that has has evolved over the years i can't believe the time um i i i think we're we're on target to uh to wrap things up there we could talk all night and, and the comments keep coming keep the comments coming we love that mm -hmm. but i love i love what you've all contributed i i couldn't thank you enough for um for saying yes to this tonight we don't often get a chance to talk about dance we just do it and so to sit with us tonight um, online in this format and say yes and, and give so much of yourselves, we're so appreciative of our guests. So thank you for, for saying yes um, to this. And for right now, we're going we're gonna to help uh, get help from our tech experts and go back into our uh, different breakout rooms. You're dancing with other partners right now and uh we're gonna there's natasha right on cue with our questions that you can you can ponder in your group so what stood out to you from this if you if you took anything away from this chat um share it with with those in the room what moved you did it take you to a moment on the dance floor that you'd like to share we want to we want people to conjure up some great stories and share them in your breakout room. So you've got uh, about the same amount of time. We'll come back here and then we will wrap up our session. So away we go.
not everything has stayed the same. <laughs> as um, but what we'd like you to do is just, if anything that was memorable from, from that last breakout session um, that you'd like to share with the group, we ask you to put it in the chat. I'll read them off. Um, and as we kind of take a little recollection of, of what might have come up, what might have come to mind as uh, you were chatting, and then we'll, we'll move on to the next part right after that. But we've got a little time to fill up the chat. Um, so go, go ahead and I'll, I'll read them off. I should make note too, we save the chat. Um, so it goes on record which is a beautiful thing. We'll keep this in our memory box. And we are recording, not our breakout rooms, but we've been recording these main parts. So the guests and, uh, and my blathering on here. And you can view it after the fact on the How We Thrive website, as well as our other sessions uh, prior and what's to come. So if someone missed out or you wanna hear what Dale said again, uh, you can. So just okay. a little note of that. Okay, so what are we seeing here? Miss the pulsating rhythm of the dance floor. Great description. Description pulsating. That's so true. If you're sitting and watching, it's something that you you really feel the energy of that movement. And what do they call when the fiddler changes the tune? You know, goes up a notch or something. That's Big key change. Yeah, that's yeah. Not, the key that's change. And fiddlers know that that's going to get it. Uh, that's that's the, how you. Yeah. yeah, it's the best, isn't it? Yeah, missing that. Um, we discussed a dance emergency at the Red Shoe one night. Don B was there and may well remember in Celtic Colors 2019. A dance emergency. Well, isn't that a tease? I want to hear more. Um, Mac from North Carolina was wondering how, am I in the right part? Oh yeah, okay. Uh, how step dancing was different from country dancing. That's a good question. It is different. Uh, there was some Scottish country dancing in these parts over the years and um, a lot of similarities to other dances, folk dances, um, Kaylee dancing in Scotland, um, uh, country and Western, there's lots of similarities, but also little nuances. Like Mary Janet said, every place had their own set, so lots of individualism. And one of the things on the Western side was the square, the step dancing that was put right into it, which led to a lot of people knowing how to dance, how to step dance. Um, so many wonderful friends found on the dance floor. Smiles and greeting people at the dances have been such a highlight of our nights at the dance. I agree, Michelle. Memories of dancing with Danny, Hector, Mr. McKay, uh -huh. and Mr. MacArthur, yeah. and Ginger. If I the saw them, voice. the golden voice, that's right. Yeah. If I saw them, my dance card was full for the night. Well, to echo that, it really goes to show how much people find a place in this tradition and how meaningful um, those relationships are. And so we carry them with us. It's a beautiful part of the, the bonding that happens. As Francis mentioned, Dale was so right about the happiness effect at the dances, the music, the community, love it. The crowd loves the key change, that's right. Ready for a social. What struck me was that I learned there is no generation gap of Cape Breton dances. That is a precious and special thing that should be cherished. Amen. Karen, that's great. Yes. Oh, there's a ton of, oh, I probably should. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm keeping an eye on the clock. We're going to get, uh, I'm going to keep reading, but maybe we can queue up our tech crew. We can queue up Hector if he's uh, nearby. He's going to give us a little preview chat about what's to come in next week's session. You're all welcome back. Uh, um, in to next week's session for another great chat there's Hector himself um, and Hector if you can unmute we'd love to hear a little bit of what you have planned for this time next Friday there I got unmuted good to Such see a you great uh, session tonight thank you everyone for that Next week, we're going to be uh, visiting with um, Mickey McNeil from uh, Janesville on the Iona Peninsula and Colin Watson, his good friend and neighbor. Mickey is uh, in his 90s and um, Colin's probably a young man in approaching 40, perhaps. And as I say, they're good friends and, and good neighbors. And
oh, that's all you get. You got to tune in. <laughs> Poor Hector sometimes has tough internet. I can fill in though. I, I think he gave you a good scoop of, of what's to come. It, there's a great, uh, as mentioned, great guest in, in Mickey, um, who is the young age of 94. He's the guest alongside Colin Watson. So you're in for a treat with hearing some, some local stories and hearing the language in full full force so um, to do that you can register the same way that you did for this and you'll get emails for it and um, we'd love to see you see you back again I'm going to read a couple more since we've got the time if that's all good unless Hector comes back um, oh you guys are just getting into the stories that's great what's Rob Dunbar say many great memories of dances in Cape Breton what Dale said about the people and just the amazing music really rings true. But I also have great memories of the Cape Breton dances in Toronto, of course. Many great memories of going back to Malcolm and Shirley McDonald's on Burnham Thorpe, Burnham Thorpe, um, where the musicians would stay and the music would carry on well after the sun came up. Great people, great fun, and great music and dance. Dale will certainly remember Malcolm and Shirley. How lovely. People's memories are pretty sharp keep them coming. That's great. Um, we're just coming up to our, our tail end of the session. And you know, I thought, well, it only seems right to get up and give a step. I know that's not the usual, but I thought it'd be fun if, um, if anyone was game and you've got the, the ability. And if you've never danced a step, I'm going to show you a quick jig step. And if you're dying to get up, now's the chance and I dare you to do it just for the laugh of it all um I'm gonna I'm gonna turn get my computer screen around here but if you're up for it stretch your legs get up and and, sh and see if you can maneuver your device to get on your feet so we can see your steps but uh we're gonna try a quick jig shuffle to end it out <laughs> end off the night oh hang on I better change this um and we're gonna dance virtually we can't get together yet but we will soon, but in the meantime, we're gonna dance virtually. Um, so I'll just show the step really quick, if you can see that okay. And then Natasha, I'm gonna cue you to, um, to play a little track when we're ready. I'm just gonna show you this really quick. Am I seeing anyone's feet yet? I'm dying to see if you'll get up. Okay, I'm gonna show you a quick jig step. It's super easy. Okay, see these? These are my feet. We got a right one and a left one. And uh, the jig step is made up of three beats. So we're gonna do a one and a two and a three. That's, the, that's one shuffle, one, two, three. Then we change, put our weight on the other foot. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. That's our shuffle, it's nice and basic. It's gonna get faster, but that's the shuffle. So try and make three beats. Da, da, dum, da, da, dum. One, two, three, four, five, six. And if that's easy, try putting two shuffles on one foot. We do that probably the most, this, this jig shuffle. And up to speed, it's about like that. Easy. Okay. Can I cue a little jig there? Do we have a jig ready? As if we're at the dance hall. Okay, fill her up for a set. Fill more couple more. Oh. Break you, break that set up. Too many couples for the set. This is Howie McDonald. Okay. Here we go. We're gonna try a shuffle.
as we said in our breakout room, give a big kick for AJ Beaton. <laughs> Just for fun. Having a laugh. Okay, shoot away. That's so great. Oh my gosh, you are tough. Thanks for for getting the nerve up and going for it. Isn't it funny dancing online? I think it's good for a laugh. We're, it's important not to take anything too seriously, you know? So that's fun. Thanks for doing that. Um, and thanks so much for tuning in tonight. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a funny world we live in, but this helps helps buy the time a little bit. A huge thank you to, um, to our guests tonight, uh, Margie and Dale and Mary Janet. You brought us a lot of joy and uh, we can't wait to see everyone in person very soon. Thanks to the whole project and our team members, of course, um, and for, uh, for Francis and uh, Gaelic Affairs for helping to make this happen. It's our, our great uh, provincial department here, which helps fuel a lot of these projects. Thanks to Natasha and Susan on the tech end for helping uh, make it all so smooth. Wouldn't happen without you. And of course, thanks for everyone chiming in. Keep the comments coming. Um, but uh, it's been super fun. And uh, I, hope, I hope to see you all in person on the dance floor very soon. Thanks again. I have a leave. Smell rain shoe. I have a leave. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. 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 Thank Okay, Thank you, Robert.